I'm at the TA um, over here in Sorry, Michigan. I have to go see if I can get one of these relay fuses. I can't find one anywhere. Not at O'Reilly's, any auto parts store. Not even my mechanic has one. Uh, probably international dealer, but when you're trucking every day, you know, working every day, you don't really have the time. So I am gonna see if TA Truck Service has one of these, which, man, I surely hope they would have this. And then also I got my IFTA a little late um, because I'm being audited by IFTA. I don't know how deep they're gonna go, but when I go to when I went to file my IFTA, there was some issues because I was lo I've been local for the past year running the same route and it's pretty much like within like a 150 mile radius, but I think that's still considered. I don't know, man. There's some discrepancies that I gotta I gotta figure out. Also, another thing, I got an email from PrePass saying, uh, which is the the Waystation bypass device that I used to have up there. I took it down because I'm sending it back to them because they overcharged me a bunch of fees and I don't want to do business with them. It is a good service, I will say that. I was able to bypass a lot of Waystations, but most of the Waystations I was doing in Michigan every day didn't even use pre-pass so I'm trying drive wise I'm on their like 30 day free trial or whatever and it seems to be pretty good but I got an email from pre-pass saying my pull-in rate for the FMCSA or the DOT my DOT pull-in rate my safety score has increased or something and my pull-in rate is at hundred percent meaning every time I go by a way station I don't get the bypass they're more than likely gonna, if I if it says pull in, I gotta pull in. But then I, I was like, what the heck did I do? And I'm, it's about to be safety blitz, and I'm not ready, man. I'm not ready for an inspection. I got some stuff I have to do to the truck, and hopefully everything goes okay, and I can avoid the way stations. That's why I like the pre-pass, or the bypass um, devices. But now I can't even use drive-wise because What's the point? You know, if I'm at 100% pulling, they can't do anything for me. I'm in uh, the Gary, Indiana area on a fry yay day. I'm heading home. I just picked up a empty uh, a trailer of empty racks after I delivered the flowers to Menards in Chicago. And 
we run into this. Not only did I run into this traffic, it's every day, but also when I was leaving my delivery in Chicago, I flipped and took the wrong exit. And because I did, I had to go through tolls on eastbound or westbound. And then I had like five miles was the next exit. Also, I had to go through a way station and then just to turn around and then once I turned around five miles out of the way, which is actually like 15 minutes in, in a truck, and I turned around, then I had to hit tolls again coming eastbound and then also the scale going eastbound. And now I got this uh, traffic back up. It's doing this every day in this section right in Gary, Indiana on 94 in between like Torrance Avenue and like basically nine interstate 912 or whatever on 94. I was gonna stop at Speedco. I'm well overdue on my uh, PM oil change. I usually get it done from my mechanic, but he's He's been busy and I just haven't had the time to be able to scoot, scoot my truck in there. I've been doing these flowers every day. So I'm gonna go to Speedco and get, get it done. I called them and they said, hey, uh, we only got two trucks doing oil changes right now. By the time you get here, nobody's waiting. You should be next. So hopefully I'll be able to get in and out. The only problem is, is I don't want to be stuck at Speedco. It is past all this, um, this whole section of uh, traffic backup, but I don't want to get stuck at Speedco and then get stuck in this crazy traffic rush out, come rush hour. Alright, we're just getting to the Speedco and Gary. And let's see, hopefully nobody's here. They're first come first serve, so hopefully we can slide up in here. So we just got done getting an oil change PM. Uh, it took about an hour and some change, but I was able to go walk over to the pilot, get some uh, slice of pizza, and then also I went to a couple different places trying to get that dang relay fuse for my turning signal, but nowhere has it. So I'm gonna have to get it when I get back to my uh, when I get back to home base and try to see, I think my mechanic has something for me. So we'll have to see what's up with that. And let's see how traffic goes, man. Oh man, I was about to go the wrong way. Hopefully I don't hit that car. Just getting to my first and only delivery and it's where we were yesterday in Tinley Park, Illinois. I basically call it Chicago, it's on the outskirts of town. And it's a Menards flower delivery. Everybody's trying to get them flowers. I just bring them 30 racks of flowers yesterday and they're getting 30 again today. All right, so we just got in through the guard shack. Got a flatbed. Got a bunch of lumber on there. Man, that tarp and stuff is hard work.
hopefully the traffic's not too bad on the way back. Hi. All right, thank you. guy was like staring me down like a madman. <laughs> what the heck? Maybe he's having a bad day. I didn't even do anything. I was pulling out of the guard house and he like came in here and was like, I'm gonna be in front of you and just whipped a, whipped around on me and then was staring me down like, dude, I didn't even do anything. So they gave us three more stops to pick up empty racks, uh, basically. They had me wait at Menards and wanted me to sit there for like three hours for $30 an hour. And I said I would if they need me to, but they said, are you happy with that? And I said, no, I'm not. Usually I charge like $150 an hour. I mean, I'm a business. Like, like that's, you know, I got expenses of that. Like I, I could be hauling other freight for a lot more than that. So, but I said I would, I said I'd be available. I'm trying to build a relationship but he knows that's not fair and I know that's not fair. Um, and I'm not trying to be greedy, I'm just trying to run a business. They asked me what a quote is that I feel happy with and they didn't like it. So he threw a bunch of other empty rack stops on there, or three of them, so yeah, they're, it's all good. I mean, he made a good point, like I can either sit there for $30 an hour or get a bunch of other stops and um, you know, have to deal with traffic and all this. So I'm at a Jewel right now, my first stop, and I literally didn't know where to come in at. I definitely couldn't come in there because it's too tight. I mean, I would have been all up on that curb, so I went all the way around, and I'm thinking maybe I should, no. If I came from that way, I'd have to cut a really nasty right corner, so we don't want to do that either. I'm gonna have to go out that way, though. up to my second stop and you know with these uh little local delivery and pickups like where you're in a lift trailer and you're pulling into like highly busy areas traffic areas uh it always amazed me how much people don't want you there like when i was at the last stop there was literally no room to move around and every i had to park right in front of the store and i had to block some of the entrances to the store uh, basically where cars would pull in and park and I hate doing that but I literally had nowhere else to go otherwise I didn't want to block any main driving uh, way so that people can't come and go I just had to block a couple entrances so there's the greenhouse so like with all that traffic you got to find the best route to where you can get in and out safely all right, I'm at my final stop, Jewel Osco. Another glorious uh, traffic pattern or whatever you want to say. Uh, Got to maneuver around the life of a liftgate driver, man. It's not easy. There's their greenhouse, so maybe I should have came over there, but somehow I got to put my trailer somewhere that's out of the way. Ideally, it'd be right next to the greenhouse, but it's probably not going to happen. I might have to go up here and then park and then just push the carts. I'd rather be out of the way than 
and uh, and then I also got to set myself up to where I can get out I am gonna try to cut over to the left and make a wide right turn I just making right turns and trucking oh my this person on the side of me is literally hold on oh my what are they doing This person is like, was parked over here and literally squeezed out next to me and there's like no room. They just did not want to wait. So I'm going to try to back up a little bit, but I got to be careful because there's people walking around everywhere and I don't want to hit people or you never know, a little kid could run by. So in these kind of delivery situations, you always got to be looking, man. And even when you're looking, you have no idea who, what, if something's gonna pop out at you. Drugs. Uh, this guy's cool, he's helping me. Helping guide me. I can't really see, I'm gonna have to hit this. I don't break it. Alright. We made it back to the home base, back to the yard. Oh, I'm not the only guy who ran today. Oh. A little bit longer than it should have been. We had a pretty good day. Turn in this paperwork so we get paid. Put it in the drop box. Boom.